you know, I'm sitting here going, I got a guy on trial for, you know, murdering murder is going to do life without parole. He gets convicted, and I got to worry about these children. Uh, this guy, you know, feuding with the guys he's sitting next to. It was it was insanity. Right, definitely. But, Hold on for a minute, Mr. Joe. Hold on, because sure. it. Okay, I got it now. All right, sitting here live with Mr. Joe, the one and only, the internet oh, wow. god. I got to do it over. <laughs> <laughs> well, here he is, man. You hear him laughing. Here he is. Yes. Mr. Joe. How you doing? All right, now that we live. Question. Okay. Questions. I just got sure. a, I just got some questions. I just want a dialogue. I want you to be comfortable. You're here. Okay. You're here on the Dana J Show, and I got the questions for you. Go ahead. I'm ready to... Uh... You know, ask questions the best way because I can, you know, like a, a lawyer, former lawyer. You know, once you get us talking, you can't, you can't shut us off. We just keep. <laughs> and know. look, and look, and I will just keep it rolling. I will keep it. Look, I will keep ask it rolling. Ask away. Uh, um, question number one. Um, how long have you been practicing well, in I the law practicing. field? Uh, I did practice for 37, 37 years. Okay. It's you know, a long time. Okay. Um, I did. I have over a hundred jury trials. Uh, I can't even count on me. Oh, certainly, well over five hundred bench trials. And uh, you know, it's um, it's what I did. I mean, here it's most uh, all of them, but mostly I was ninety nine percent of them Cook County, Illinois. So it's uh, safe which, to so it's safe to say that you not only a veteran, you are a seasoned veteran. Yeah, I would say so. Very, very few people, you know, have, you know, uh, there's a, maybe a handful of people in the state and outside the public defenders of pu prosecutor's office, pretty private lawyers that have that many, they have that much trial experience. It's, it's a lot of, tr it's, it's a substantial amount, but that's what I like doing. I like trying cases. So, um, that's, that's how I got it. It was, um. It's, it's it's you know trying cases is a lot. Of, it's a, it can be a lot of fun. It really, if you know what you're doing, it can be a lot of fun. Uh, but it's also can be quite stressful because you know you got, you're you got people's lives on the line. Right. It's very so, stressful stuff. Right. So, question as a as a seasoned veteran lawyer and seeing this R. Well, Kelly case in New York and in Chicago. Right. Are you are you any pretty much familiar with with the charges that he's being charged with? Yeah, I mean, I look at, uh, I really wasn't following the case very closely um, uh, in, until I saw this, uh, for all this, this, this debacle starting <laughs> with, with, with Greenberg. Uh, right. uh, like, holy cow, he's doing, I, I, he's doing the exact same thing. So then I sat down, I, you know, went and I looked at the docket sheet and I looked at the charges and, uh, you know, because all I had seen up to then was basically what was in the newspaper, what was the, you know, online. Uh, but I, I, I understand, you know, the charges in New York are kind of strange. I mean, they're, they're really bizarre. Um, you know, how come New York is charging him, for example, Southern, the uh, Eastern District of New York is charging him regarding transactions and, and things that took place in Chicago? You know, mostly, you know, like for anything to do with the 2008 Exactly. Trial. Exactly. I mean, that, why is that in New York, and why is that not in the Northern District of Illinois? Yeah, and I'm gonna tell uh, you why. I'm gonna tell you why I believe. Okay. Simply because if they try that in the Northern District of Illinois, it would be double jeopardy. And because okay. he got acquitted for that already, statewide. Well, yeah, that's that's the thing. Now, there's a there's a problem with double jeopardy between the state court. And by the way, I'm not practicing law anymore, so I'm not really... No, you I ain't thought, practicing law, and you ain't giving uh, so no I'm, advice. I'm a, I'm, I'm a former lawyer, so... <laughs> and you um, ain't giving no advice. I am not giving no advice. I'm just... A, I'm a former... I, I call myself on Twitter, I think, controversial former attorney. I'm with so, you. I'm with you. So, any, any event, but I, you know, I can give my opinion, and my, my opinion is that there's a difference... Well, certainly there's a difference between federal and state court and double jeopardy right. issues. But, there's this concept that's called um, res judicata uh, and collateral stop they're the same things right. collateral estoppel res judicata right. what it means is if, a, if you go on, if, if, a, if something's been established by a court as a fact they really you can't contest it uh, or try it's kind of binding in, in all courts you know right. and, and you, you can kind of get around it 
but it, it, it's, it's difficult and it, prevent, it presents problems. And, but, you know, and that would be certainly something that would be very strongly felt in, uh, in, in, this, in this, if you do it in the same case as the acquittal. But you're right, in New York, it's less likely to be as, uh, as respected. And I think the New York case, though, had something to do with um, the uh, spreading of, the, uh, allegedly spreading of a venereal disease. Yeah, herpes. And, uh, which is a misdemeanor. And, you know, but they use that to kind of hook in the federal jurisdiction, you know, the wire fraud uh, jurisdiction. Right. The, uh, and the, that type of thing. And it seems like almost kind of, you know, they, they, they really went and stretched to get to make a, a case in New York. Right. Uh, why? God only knows. Uh, but they, they really... It seems like the main event would have been the one, the charge in the Northern District of Illinois, and the one in Cook, and the new charges in Cook County. Exactly. So why are they? Why is the, uh, you know, the weakest case uh, going first? And yeah, but then see, and that's what I was trying to tell everybody, but that follows me, um, in the fact that the New York case sound complicated, but it's actually the weakest case. And and the thing is, is the federal government knew that. That's why they sent somebody who proclaims to be Robert's friend to come and do all this other stuff. So that way, all the other stuff is going to fall off. But they are hoping to get him on the RICO charges pertaining to his friend having having one of the accusers slash victims um, car blown up and then uh, yeah, trying to get him on the phone and stuff like that. Yeah, and that's what's strange because, um, you know, the RICO. I mean, RICO is a, uh, a, a, a very complex statute that's meant to get, you know, the mobsters, the, uh, you know, like the, the John Gotti's right. um, of the world. And what, what, uh, what they're accusing um, Mr. Kelly of is really just a simple, you know, I mean, when you come down to it, it's a basic statutory rape case. I mean, that's that's basically it. Right. Uh, you know, and th- th- they seem to, you know, they seem to have taken a statutory rape case and kind of blown it into this uh, big complex federal case that, that just out of proportion to what it what it really is. But you know, be it, be what it may, I mean, he's got the charges and they're keeping him in jail. So, so you know, you can't just um, say it's a farce. So let me ask you this. So let me ask you this, Mr. Joe. Um, I'm glad you said that. Because um, a writ of corpus habeas. Habeas, yeah. That will be able to really over overrule that for that RICO ruling and at least give him home detention, right? Well, you know, they they tried. I saw when I looked at the docket. No. No, you know, but that came from somebody else. That ain't come from, yeah. yeah. Greenberg yeah, saw, struck I, that down. I saw, so, I saw something about that, but I forgot where I'd seen it. Uh, I, somebody had filed a habeas position, a petition, and then it got knocked down. And a habeas, you anyway, know, what the habeas corpus is is uh, you. they tip you use you. Well, they can use for a lot of things, but you know what you see them used for is a guy who's been convicted in state court. And he's gone through the appeals court, and they've confirmed it. And then he goes to the state supreme court, and they affirm it. And but there's a fe- but his federal constitutional rights are violated by the courts, and the and the state courts are just not doing anything about it. So you can go to federal court on what's called the writ of habeas corpus, right. and challenge their right to detain you because the detention violates your federal rights. The bond issue is really, you know, diff- difficult at this point. It really, doesn't matter much. You're only two months from trial. Uh, but you know it, it's um, you know, it's a it's a difficult issue. But I you know they basically Kelly you know Kelly wasn't they're not they government just wasn't going to let him out. It's just that's just bottom line. Um, they're just not going to let him out. Here's one of those you know I mean you look at it they let Avenatti out uh, even though he was a serial scammer and thief. They, they, let they let Josh Duga out. Now that's what yeah. kills me. Yeah, they let uh, guys like uh, you know what was his name uh, the, the guy that, that that scammed fifty billion dollars. Uh, yeah, in, in New York, uh, what's his name? Uh, 
Bernie Madoff. Yep. They let him. They let him in home detention. Uh, but you heard about the yeah. Josh Duggar case? Uh, I, I that name sounds familiar. That's the one really. that raped his two sisters and raped his two daughters. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And they let him out on bond. Yeah, but they got him out on bond. And uh, and they said that he was in. But they said that he was a, a flight risk. And he turned around and said, I'm too famous to be a flight risk. But wait a minute. Oh, yeah, yeah. I know. I know you're talking about. If you're too famous yeah. to be a fl- flight risk, then what about Robert? I mean, look, and then that's, you know, and that's what's, you know, I, I mean, really, you know, Rob, uh, they could, and they could, you could make arrangements to, you could to keep a guy home detention if you want to. Right. But they, they just weren't going to do it. They were going to keep him in jail. And then I got, I mean, my, I look at all these other people that got out, and I look at Robert. Why didn't he get out? And I, I got to tell you, there's like, there's certainly not, at least a, from an outsider point of, just looking at it, you know, in the macro from the outside, it, uh, there seems to be a bit of racism there. You know, it, I say that too. You know, I mean, you know, you got the big, you know, I mean, you know, you got these uh, these uh, middle aged and older white guys, and they get to go sit in their apartments while it's going on, but the you know, the big, powerful black guy, you know, he's scary. We're going to keep him in jail. Yeah, because, that's what I think is, is that's, yeah, because, I think it's, it's kind of obvious. I think. Right. But, but yeah, I mean, that's, I, that seems to be the message that they're sending. Right, because I sent Steve, uh, uh, but I sent Greenberg, uh, 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 but I told him to fill it out and just submit it. And it was a declaration under color of law. Um, yeah, but, you know, they're going to, they're not going to, you know, one judge is going to overrule another judge. But look, at, you know, the bottom line is, look, at, he's got a trial coming up to, mm-hmm. in a couple of months. And right now, you know, the, uh, the there should be real serious, you know, they've blown a lot of deadlines and wasted a lot of time and opportunities right. to do things. And they got two months to do it. And, you know, I don't know if they even can do a lot of these things they need to do in these in this two months. But, they, you know, they need to get to work. And apparently, you know, obviously, you know, Greenberg wasn't doing anything, just like in this in the Peterson habeas. He, right. They, they, so the, the, the lawyer, uh, Tom and Nicole, you know, they need this is a diver, they're being, this is a diversion. They need this needs to be resolved. They are great. Fast, people. fast. They are get, great. Get, people. This, I'm, they seem like very competent yeah, uh, people. They people. seem very smart people, and they seem to be dedicated to just wanting to get the job done and done right. And they they need to, uh, you know, a case needs to get ready for trial. Right. Uh, you know, it, it's uh, you know, the, so you know, this diversion needs to be put over with. You know. Right. It, it's funny. Um, you know, the, well, apparently. And this is, Green, this is Greenberg's uh, forte. I and mean, this is what he does. You know, I'm the best. You know, he's trying to come up with a, uh, a something that's, that the uh, argument is going to say, Judge, I want you to tell Mr. Kelly that I'm the much superior lawyer. And I'm the one that really knows what's going on. And I have all the experience. And he should go with me. And he shouldn't trust these other people who aren't as good as I am. He, you know, qualifications and, and experience and all that other stuff. And that's what he—that's what he wants, and, and just kind of like scare, him, uh, you know, uh, Mr. Kelly into, into you know, taking him and getting rid of the or make, getting rid of these other two who are not letting. Well, I don't think up. that's going to happen. No, here's why. Uh, and the judge, I think, is smart enough to know this. Uh, if they even if they even tell him, you know, you got four licensed, five licensed lawyers. Right. You know, okay. If the judge gets into trying to tell the client or tell the defendant that one lawyer is better than another, more experienced, better, whatever, um, you know, um, better qualifications or whatever than the other, uh, that's reversible error, period, end of story. The case is, you know, if there's a conviction, that, that conviction gets tossed out. It, right. you, cannot, you cannot even bring that up. And the judge, I'm sure, knows that. So I think that's... Uh, Grimmer is going to be try to do that on Thursday, but I think that the judge is going to shut him down pretty damn fast. Um, you know, and all these things about you know uh, problems that Tom may have had in the past. Uh, you know, they are, she's probably she may ask him if there's 
he, if he has any questions or any concerns. And uh, if he says no, this is the way I think it'll be over in in a, just a few. So hopefully, it'll be over just in a few seconds. But yeah, but what do that know? have to do with what's going on now? Whenever Tom was had going on back then, that's that man business. That's not for the world to know. Yeah, I kind of feel bad. That's why I really feel bad. That's why I try to been encouraging people to you know tell them that there's yeah, can I like, definitely you know, whatever so, different groups yeah. are, just that they should you know try to. You know, you tell them that they have people supporting them and helping them, and, you know, <laughs> behind them. Because, uh, you know, I, uh, it's really, you know, it's, it's stressful when, you know, uh, you're out there, you know, when these type of things come out and people attack you in public with, you know, everybody's got flaws. Everybody's got shit in their past. Right. You know, right. And, uh, you know, it's, uh, but, you know, he's a very competent lawyer. I mean, you know, he has a lot of experience in state court cases, uh, criminal cases, uh, you know, a lot. And, you know, if he, you know now Green, there's Greenberg trying to say, oh, well, I'm a federal, you know, criminal lawyer. Hey, is he? What well, what type of federal case? Well, think about it, though. Which, which is more experienced? Which is, the, which is the tougher, more complex? Okay, you never see, you don't see murder and rape and armed robbery cases, real serious cases get tried in federal court. Federal court's already... Mail fraud and white collar crime, ninety nine right. percent of it. A couple of terrorism cases here and there, but you know they're real. Or, or you know, um, a couple of mob cases, but those are very, very few and far between. Mostly they're just you know, uh, you know, con men and scam artists and stock fraud and stuff like that. The real serious crimes are in state court. That's where you get your murders and your serial killers and your really serious crimes. Right. So a guy that's practicing criminal law in state court is really going to have to deal with much more serious, much more, uh, where there's a lot more at stake and um, actually really more complex, uh, you know, from an evidentiary point of view, than a guy in the federal court. So I think that, you know, he's making, it's just the opposite of what Greenberg's saying. You know, a guy that's maybe, that's more experienced in state court than federal court is the guy I think you really want. <laughs> they're defending you because he knows he knows what is you know when there's a very lot at stake he knows uh what to do whereas a federal guy is you know going to be you know 99 or 95 percent of cases in federal court are are just pleas right right so you don't you know i mean you know but i'm gonna say this that trials i watched greenberg get handled in state court actually in child support yeah, I, court i, I mean i was looking like yo are you going to say something? And it got to the point where he got so frustrated that he just started swinging in a chair and chewing on a pen. And I'm like, bro, there's certain things you can say. And I'm sitting in the back, like, saying to myself, like, like uh, one of the questions when the judge was like, um, uh, Mr. Kelly, we, oh, we want Mr. Kelly and to hand over his correct address. Wait a minute. Greenberg could have actually refuted that, but he was like, Your Honor, okay. Your Honor, okay. No. No, you in court. Court is a battleground. And you got to show why your client shouldn't do what the state or the federal government want them to do. Well, you know, it's, it's look, in the, in, uh, he, we had a problem with him at the beginning of the first trial where we had told him that, okay, you're going to do object, you know, if there's an, if the state's, uh, asking questions, you know, their witnesses, and there's a problem. Mm -hmm. you, you know, you, you're the one that makes the objection. Usually they designate, you know, if there's more than one lawyer, they designate a guy to actually make the objections. Okay. Right? So, all of a sudden, you know, we're going along, boom, 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 and then, you know, every, they saw, state would ask the question that was improper, and we're all sitting there going, object. You know, mm -hmm. and he wouldn't object. And then, you know, it happened again, and a few more times, and finally, you know, we got four lawyers standing behind them, saying, Steve, fucking object! And he wouldn't, he wouldn't object. So, like, after the first day, we had to take that job away from him. We're like, what the fuck is wrong with you? Why aren't you objecting? And, <laughs> and, uh, I think that, you know, my, uh, my opinion was, is that he was more interested in get you know, going out into the, the media room and talking to the reporters and trying to arrange interviews than he was in actually preparing for that day's court. Let me ask you this. 
Fun, I'm glad you said that. Because I was told in New York, uh, in New York Federal, and when Robert went last time, and everybody was able to go in and before COVID, I was told that uh, Greenberg went to go eat lunch with Gloria Allred. And Gloria Allred is a prosecuting... Yeah, uh, I, know, I know Gloria. Right. She, yeah. Uh, yeah, but, you know, she's a, she's a Hollywood lawyer. And her daughter uh, has those, um, you know, all those, uh, you know, t- those shows, those right. TV shows. Right. Uh, you know, and uh, so, you know, once again, I mean, that's, you know, he's trying, he wants to, you know, he wants to be on TV, he wants to be his face in the news and his face in the media. And, you but, know, that, <laughs> yeah, but she's the enemy and you can't go in, you know what I mean? I don't know if you call her the enemy, but, you know, look at why you know what you got a certain amount of time you know you're in the middle of a hearing we used to <laughs> like during during the during the piercing game okay i had arranged during that trial it was just but remember <laughs> the we had an eight-week pre-trial evidentiary hearing and then the trial itself was uh eight weeks so you know that's okay. a long that's a lot of you know that's eight weeks a long way you know over right. two months to go for trial mm. so i had arranged and all we had i got we rented out a little office uh, right across the street from the courthouse because there was uh, you know, it was a uh, Will County, which is uh, you know uh, a county over from where Cook is, mm-hmm. and you know, and then I had arranged for lunch to be delivered every day, so that you know we could all go from court. We have you know an hour and a half break. We can all sit there and and discuss what's going on and go over things, prepare for the afternoon. You know, so you don't have to go out and everybody's not going to different places to get lunch and running around. We all come back at a place to go, a place to sit. Lunch was there, and we'd uh, we'd eat and, and prepare and talk about what was going to happen in the afternoon and plan ahead. And the one thing that always happened, almost on a daily basis, was we all get there and start you know opening our lunches and start talking, and everybody look around. But where's Steve? Because <laughs> he never he never went. Wow. He never came. You know, because he was in you know he was downstairs talking to the the uh, court TV person or you know. The Tribune reporter, or he'd be in the he'd be in the media room having lunch with the media people. Just wasn't seem to be interested in actually trying the case. He was interested in the publicity that the case generated. It's definitely a pattern for of yeah, a Steve doing that. It's right. definitely and a pattern. That's kind of why I came forward. That's why I started tweeting this stuff because you're 100 percent right. Uh, there was a pattern here. He wanted to do what he did to Drew to Peterson, which was. You know, use him as a vehicle to get his name in the paper, and you know, and we used to call him name in the paper, name right. in the media, right. and and that's what I, you know, fellow was Kelly. And then when I looked at the docket, in the, in I'm the, about to go there. Kelly, oh my god! But I'm about to go there. I'm I'm just yeah. like I say, man, you on the same page, Joe? Because I'm about to ask you, man. Look, you're a season uh, a lawyer, former attorney. Okay, you're a season former attorney. Yeah, great. Right. Let's put it like that. You're a seasoned former attorney, right? Uh-huh. So let me ask you this. If you was the lead on this case, right? Uh-huh. In two years, how many filings would you have put in there? Jesus. You know, it was funny you asked that question because I, I pulled, I, you know, on the, my computer, I pulled up the old Peterson file. Mm-hmm. And I was looking at, at, the, at the motions we had filed. Uh, and literally... Uh, Remember, we had eight weeks of pre-trial, evidentiary pre-trial hearings uh, <laughs> so, yeah, uh, before we the trial, even, you know, uh, about almost a year before the trial started. Right. Uh, but uh, literally, we must have filed you know, between seventy-five and a hundred pre-trial motions challenging different parts of evidence, different pieces of evidence. And that's just pre-trial. Right, yeah, the motions, well, right up there, motions to eliminate, motions to suppress, motions to exclude evidence, you know, motions to try to narrow the, uh, what type of evidence could be admitted. Right. They want, for, like, they wanted to try to introduce a, um, a demonstrative, like a, mo- a model of the, of what the bathroom that Kathy Savio died in, what it would look like, and we objected to that model objected to it and there had to be a hearing on that i mean all these different things challenging basically every single piece of evidence they wanted to try to put in the bullet that was allegedly left in front of a witness's house uh, short, uh shortly after the 
Kathy was found dead. Right. And, um, you know, then challenge that bullet, bullet. You say, oh, yeah? Tell us, let's see the chain of custody on where that bullet's been. You know, how do we know that this is the bullet that actually was left there? If there exactly. was a bullet that was left there. So we would challenge every single piece of evidence. And it was, you know, and every and then every witness uh, that was going to testify, we would file motions to try to narrow what they could testify to. You know, saying, okay, this witness saw what? We don't want the witness straying off, you know, into speculation or saying something that we didn't expect when they finally took the stand. So we brought motions to kind of try to narrow what they were going to say and what was allowed and what wasn't. So quick. And, oh, and, that's, oh, go ahead. and that's, what, that's, what, that's what pretrial litigation is all right. about. And, I mean, that's what you got in a serious criminal case. Uh, that's, what's, that's what needs to be done. So question. And it wasn't. It hasn't been done in this. In at all. Kelly's case. Not a, look, at the only, not at all. No. The only thing I, I did look, I looked uh, again today, and I, there's this thing called Rule 35, Section 3500 evidence. That's what they call, uh, which are st statements or grand jury transcripts of uh, witnesses and right. statements taken from that the government generally, usually, not, nine, <laughs> you, you, when you, Two years ago, they should have been a motion. Usually, they would file a motion at the beginning of the case asking for an early disclosure of that evidence. Right. Because the government really doesn't have to give it to you. Technically, not not even until after the witness uh, testifies. But they, you know, generally don't give it to you at the sixty days before. Wow. Okay. Uh, or even less, thirty days before. Um, but you ask for it earlier, and the judges will generally, you know, tell them to give it to you earlier so you can prepare these motions and eliminate motions to uh you know to narrow the focus or the scope of the testimony or exclude them from testifying to certain things and uh because but in this case i said that I, I didn't see such a motion actually and there wasn't right. but what there was was the judge had ordered i noticed back in it was kind of hidden in the language in the docket sheet but that they she ordered the disclosure of the uh by on her own and, and late February of 2021, so February. So they did, uh, there was a question about whether or not they could disclose the names of the people, but that was resolved because I think, I haven't, you know, <laughs> from the news reports uh, and the order, it seems like the judge, uh, you know, said that, you know, put a protective order on the names, but did give the names uh, to the to the lawyers. Right. And, okay, so... They've had this since late February. So I, when I said that they hadn't got all the 3,500 3, material, I think they got most of it, you know, and they, they had a, there were some issues with the names, so, you know, they didn't get a, they didn't get a full 100% disclosure, but they got at least 90% of it. But I was okay, shocked to see there's no Brady material. Well, Brady material is different, but on this 3,500 material, but then I, I said to myself, okay, okay, I was wrong about that. You know, they got it February or they got, you know, 65, 60, 70 days ago. Okay. All right. All right. Where are the fucking motions? Where are the motions eliminate to exclude witnesses, to suppress witnesses, to narrow witnesses' testimony? Where are they? Or, yeah. Where, you know, sometimes you get a statement where a witness says something to the grand jury that they say something else in a, uh, later on. Thank you. Yep. You bring a motion to say, judge, they've said two different things. Mm -hmm. Either prevent them from testifying at all because they're unreliable or they got to pick a story <laughs> so which one is it and uh because i we just can't sit there and, and guess which one so you pour these motions these motions should have all been filed so the fact that they got something that they didn't if that when i was saying they didn't get it that was bad enough but now we know they got it two and a half months ago and they still haven't done anything no motions with it. And what, see, what the hell's going on? And see, because Greenberg is the one that want to file all the motions. Yeah, I understand. That's right. Greenberg heard. don't want nobody else filing They'll motions. Filing him or nobody right. doing nothing. Everything got to go through him. Which to me is like, okay, fine. But at least file the motions. Then. <laughs> you know, if, then I do that, know that. a couple of the lawyers then gave him motions of lemonade. And yeah, motions of lemonade, right. Can, can, can I'm going to go here. For the people in the back, could you explain what the motion of lemonade is? Motion, yeah, motion in limine, it's, it's a Latin term in limine. But basically, it means before, basically, it translates 
motion before trial, motion before hearing. But what it mean, what it really is, is don't worry about the Latin name. What it means is it's a motion uh, to for a ruling on evidence to be admitted at trial. So let's it can work both ways. But let's suppose that you have a witness who's given three different stories to three different people, and uh, well, you know, and just can't keep the story straight. Okay. Be- uh, and, you know, rather than, you know, you can do two things. You can, that witness can either testify, and then as the cross-examination, you talk, you tell the jury, you show, hey, you've given other statements, you're not reliable, so, you know, the jury shouldn't listen to you, which is always the kind of the... But the other thing you can do is bring a motion to limit and say, judge, this person is so is unreliable, they should not be allowed to testify, because our job is to not to... Confuse, to confuse the jury right. with ten different stories. Right. You know that that's that's not fair. I mean, we don't want confused juries. <laughs> you yeah. know, that's not the job. So uh, and and then she'd bring a motion like that. That would be one example. Another example would be a guy you see in the thing. He talks about he talks about five different issues, and two of them are hearsay. So you bring a motion to eliminate and say, judge. You can testify to one, two, and three, but we want you to enter an order now in advance that he can't testify to four and five because they're hearsay. And the judge enters an order that he can't testify to the hearsay issues. And then, you know, if he does, uh, even though you've ordered him not to, that's great because you can have a mistrial. Right. And, okay. So, there, you know, you do it. And then there's another reason to do those things. Okay. Because. So you you know usually there's uh, the witness who you're going to have the uh, issue or you're talking about if it's a, regarding an issue or regarding evidence. Mm-hmm. You know the, somebody has to they have an evidence. There's a hearing where just somebody testifies at a pretrial hearing, and now you have the transcript of their testimony under oath. So if they get up on the stand at trial and say something different, you then you can pull out their transcript and yep. say hey. You know, because we're not allowed, you're not allowed to do discovery depositions in criminal cases like there are civil cases. So you do these motions instead, motions to suppress and motions to eliminate. So you can uh, basically, you know, <laughs> get get a get a what's basically a deposition. So if the witness testifies to something else at trial, you got him, you know, you got him basically saying two different things under oath. Right. And, and the argument is the jury then shouldn't believe anything they say. So, right, and that, and also they they can be charged for that too, right? Well, yeah, I mean, yeah, they generally are very, very rarely, uh, you know. But the point, you know, if the guy's acquitted, you know, <laughs> you know, that's the that's the goal. Uh, so, or to raise a reasonable doubt. Okay, so uh, oh, so motion to suppress. Yeah, motion to suppress a statement. Now that usually that means uh, uh, the uh, suppression is typically a guy gives a statement. They want to use anything that Mr. Kelly said, like in that stupid interview we gave with Gail King. Okay. Now, wait a minute. Wait, 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 wait. And before you go any further, I got to say this because this killed me. Greenberg said that he wasn't at that interview, right? That's what what I've heard he said. I have photos of him being at that interview. I believe you could turn, if you watch the tape really closely, you can see his head. Exactly. but I can't say that for sure. I mean, I I haven't done a forensic analysis of the tape and slowed it down and taken a frame and enlarged it or anything to see if it is him. Uh, but you know, I've certainly heard people say that. I'm so, going to put some video. I mean, some photos up on Twitter tonight. Okay. And I'm just going to ask: Is this Greenberg or not? I'll, I'll tell you. I mean, I'll I'll be happy. I like to look at him. But, Definitely. And, but go go ahead and finish with that. Go ahead. Yeah, but, you know, suppose that, you know, and by the way, if he wasn't there, that would have been out of character. I mean, you couldn't keep him. When we, were, we had a problem keeping him off the camera, not putting, you know. Right. So, uh, but, you know, anything's possible. You know. So anyway, uh, so anyway, the government wants to use some of that stuff against him. All right. So you could bring a motion. You want to suppress that. You don't want that to come in. You want to suppress the statement. Okay. And there's lots of different reasons you can do it. You know, uh, you know, it's out of context. It's unreliable. Uh, you know, just a number of different reasons. Right. Uh, and then, if you have a, a statement uh, by a witness, right? You can mm-hmm. bring a motion to suppress that witness for a certain 
for certain reasons. Let's suppose they're undisclosed government agent. They've been paid. All right? But, so, but, you know, there's, you know, and, and they weren't properly disclosed or properly, that, that whole process wasn't done properly. You can ask that they, they be, that their testimony be suppressed. Uh, I, I mean, so where question. are these motions? You know, we're talking about, hate to say it, if he's convicted, he could die, he could be the rest of his life in prison. Right. So this is not a game. Right, so yeah. question, but I have a statement and a question. So it's like a combined situation. All right. For the for the so called accusers slash victims that have been paid, whether it was instructed by Robert Kelly or or wasn't instructed by Robert Kelly, they have been paid. And the way the court of law is, when there's when, or when there's a remedy that it has been met, you can't come back and sue criminally once you already got a remedy for that situation. Oh, you're talking about people that sign non disclosure agreements? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Uh, so what I'm saying yeah. is, can't they do a motion to dismiss for all those but assigned one? Well, uh, certainly an issue. Now, generally speaking, you can't, you know, if the, the, a person, you can't buy your way out of criminal liability. So if you commit a crime, you just can't pay off all the all the witnesses and victims' family. You kill somebody, you can't just pay off the witnesses and victims' family and then, you know, get them to sign papers and get away with the murder, right? But that being said, in a case like Kelly's, where you know, uh, you know, there's a guy, a very famous and very wealthy man, who, you know, a lot of people will, you know, uh, sue just for monetary reasons, not because they were really harmed or anything happened, but because they can make a buck. You know, pe rich people are can be targets, uh, you know, for that type of that type of scam. So a lot of times, what they'll do is they'll, rather than spend mil uh, you know hundreds of thousand dollars fighting it. They'll pay them off really cheap and get an NDA, get a non-disclosure and a release and everything. Okay, I mean that's just cost of doing business in the entertainment industry. Right. So, uh, so what you do is you would bring a motion and say, like I said, I'm not. This is not legal advice, right. please. Right. <laughs> this is just you know my uh, my musings and my opinion is from is your years my of expertise analysis. Years experience, right? Yeah, I'm not telling. You know, with Kelly's lawyers, what to do or anything. No, 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 you good. But, what, but what, I, what I'm saying is that you can bring a motion and say, Judge, we have somebody here who uh, signed a document that said that uh, they're accepting money uh, and that, uh, you know, and that they're agreeing that, you know, missed, that the, the government, that what those releases generally say is that it's a, you know, it's a contested fact and there's no admission of guilt. Uh, and they're agreeing that, you know, that there's a contested fact about whether or not Mr. Kelly did that. So we want either that witness to be excluded or we want the jury to be informed that that witness has agreed in exchange for money that Mr. Kelly's, uh, that al allegations against Mr. Kelly may or may not be true. The allegations they made. Well, if that's and we the case. You, and we want you to instruct the jury that that makes that witness's testimony uh, less credible because of the, because of this. And you can get sometimes an instruction like that. And you can imagine a judge telling the jury, hey, this witness, you know, there's problems with this witness. You, you might not, they might have an ulterior motive. Uh, you know, uh, so, you know, that, that, uh, that obviously is something that the defense would really want. So you'd want to bring motions like that. Uh, on every single one of those witnesses, and you want to try to, you know, either na very narrow their testimony, restrict it, you want, or try to get an instruction on it, or try to get them, you know, get uh, orders, uh, you know, that that basically say that when they're asked this question, they can't try to avoid answering the question. Yeah, I took money in order to say that it didn't happen, uh, but it did, you know. But now I'm saying it did happen. You know, they can't try to worm their way out of that. Right. You know, and you want to bring motions to that to lock them in on their test on what they're going to say. You know, each and every one, and 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 not to do that. I mean, you know, and this is what bothers me. This is why I really, when I really decided to, you know, get everything. That, well, I got more more stuff that'll be coming out. Trust me. Uh, oh, yeah. When I started to put stuff out, uh, showing what Greenberg really is, because I'm looking at this thing going, man. This guy's got 60 days left to do basically two years worth of work. <laughs> and 
you know, it's and then, you know, it's. Uh, I mean, this is this is a this is a travesty. You know, I, I look. At, I've said this before. I don't know if Mr. Kelly's guilty. I don't know if he's innocent. You know, I wasn't there. I don't know what happened in those houses. I don't know the relationship between the parties. I I, don't, I just know what I read in the paper. And right. we all know you can't believe if you believe one percent of what you read in the paper, it's one percent too much. You're done. Yeah, you know, yeah. So. You know, I, I don't believe, you know, so, you know, I don't know. All I do know is that everybody should be entitled to a fair trial with a decent, with a lawyer at least doing a, doing their job, their job properly, and a jury who won't convict them unless they're proven guilty beyond a reasonable doubt. That I believe, Facts. everybody, I don't care who they are. Facts. I don't believe what they're accused of. This, this is, this is a basic thing because if they government can put you in jail without that then we're really not living in a free country anymore right so so you know and then i saw that you know this guy is who's basically he's you know i mean he's a great artist and a, and a genius in music but functionally illiterate you know so it's very difficult for him to talk to his lawyers and go over paperwork and he's in a jail a thousand miles away from the lawyers who are actually doing the paperwork I know how the hell is he going to get a fair trial, right? And like like this, right? And it, then it after just, that, it's impossible, it, right? And then then it kills me because Greenberg is uh, less than fifteen yards away. Yeah, his office. Yeah, he's uh, he's in the Monadnock building on uh, fifty three West Jackson, and then right. you go out the back door and on Van Buren Street, and you're right there at the Metropolitan Correctional Center. Uh, you know, he's uh, he's right across the street. Yeah. And I used I used to be in that building twenty years ago. It's a great building. You know, it was built by uh, Plain Clyde Wright, and it's uh, oh man, yeah, it, it's the it's the still to this day the tallest load bearing structure in the world. In other words, there are in the uh, wall. It's all brick. There are no steel girders. It's all brick. Wow. It's all it's all masonry. And so was uh, no beams and nothing in it. Nothing, nothing, uh, no beams. It, so at the at the base of the building, the walls are like you know. Oh, God, 15, 20 feet thick, you know, because they support the whole structure. It's like, uh, it's really something. It's, it's, a, it's an amazing piece of, uh, of engineering. But in any event, it's a, it's a really great building. So uh, I, when I was in that building, they still had elevator operators, you know, guys that would, you know, take you up and down. Right. <laughs> all day, that was their job. Eighth floor. Bing, yeah, 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 it, it was wild, yeah. You know, I don't see that anymore. But right. that was a good union. They had a good union. But anyway, uh, right. So, question. I I got another question for you. Um, how did you feel when you was working with Greenberg on the Drew well, Peterson case? I mean, it was uh, initially, you know, uh, when he was. I mean, we gave him his assignments. You know, he was seemed to. You know, we had worked on uh, one one appeal that went up, that we were dealing with, and he seemed to be. Know, doing his work on that, and we got the appeal, appellate brief filed. And, uh, you know, it didn't really, see, but you know, I could tell things didn't start going south, didn't start really seeing, I didn't start seeing problems until about a month before the trial when he told, he was started to complain that his wife had left him, which she did right around that point in time. And, um, and then, you know, he just wasn't, he, he wasn't preparing. For, for his, uh, he kept wanting the best witnesses to cross-examine. He said, I want to cross-examine this person, a star witness, you know, really tough witnesses. But he was, wasn't preparing. And if he didn't get all the witnesses he wanted, he'd get upset. And then he started And that's what's going up. on now. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. He's doing the same friggin' playbook. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know. That's what's and, going on now. Yeah, it's a, he's running the same playbook to try to take over the case, just like he did in Peterson, so that you know he can use Kelly as a vehicle to put his name in it, which is exactly what he did with Drew Peterson. I put out today the docket sheet in Drew's habeas corpus case. I got that. And, yeah, and you know, look at that. Now, it's been over two years. Not damn not not a not one thing filed. He filed the complaint. And that's it. In two years, it's. You know, and Drew, I mean, Peterson, like, I'm not saying that Peterson was convicted, you know, of all these crimes, you know, and there was, not because there wasn't any evidence, you know, 
you know, he, you know, so, you know, I'm not trying to paint Drew Peterson as some sort of victim. He certainly is not. Uh, you know, he got a fair trial. He got two fair trials, actually. Uh, so is but, he still in jail, or is he out he, of jail? But he's sitting there. Yeah, he's going to die in jail. He's Dr- never getting out. Drew Peterson? Yeah, he, he's never getting out. But the point is is that he he's sitting there locked in jail thinking that at least, you know, somebody's trying to do something for him with this habeas petition, you know, and nothing's getting done. Not a goddamn, not nothing. It, it's... I, I've not, <laughs> I've never seen anything like like it, where you have a case just sit with nothing happened for two years, and a guy sitting in prison, and you're filing a doc, a pleading that says that this guy's fundamental constitutional rights were violated, wow. and you and you just file the paper and do nothing about you know give a couple of newspaper articles uh, blaming everybody else for his conviction, and, and you do nothing for two years. You know, what the hell is that? So that's kind of what, when, and the reason he did that was because the only thing he reason he wanted to throw get everybody out in Peterson and be in the ca- and, and have himself in control of the case so he could use it to give interviews and to get his name in the paper and to say, yeah, I represent this, this uh, big name, you know, high profile criminal and, you know, that, and I'm special and great and wonderful and look at me, wow. That's, that's his. That's his goal. That was all he. And, and that's what I think. You know, my opinion, right? Because mm-hmm. I can't. I can't. Uh, you know, cut his head open and look inside of what's going. What you know, what's going on in there? But uh, you know, my opinion. I, it looks like he wants to do the same thing with Kelly because he's acting in the exact same way. Because see, I'm gonna tell you, and what actually got me thinking that as well. Um, when when the Derek Chauvin case was going on. Mm-hmm. He went on court TV to give analysis about the case. But wait a minute. Why would you give analysis about a Derek Chauvin case when your client don't have motions to eliminate, motions to yeah. suppress, or motions to dismiss? So how can yeah. you give analysis about anything? Oh, yeah. By the way, there's, there's a really good motion to dismiss that I think, like I said, not legal advice, just my own pleading, my own kind of like thinking on it. I think that there's a really good motion to dismiss that can be filed in, uh, you know, uh, in the in this case in New York, uh, challenging the jurisdiction of the New York courts. Exactly. You know what? But I'm already on it. Um, well, I've you know, sent it up yeah, to. Look, they're, good, they're good lawyers, and I, you know, right. there's there's good. You know, that's why I hopefully, you know, with, with everybody showing love and support for Tom and Nicole and this and any and uh, that. You know, th- this will be over with, and you know, Thursday, and there won't be much damage done to the case. Right. And and, these, and they'll be able to file these motions. Because, especially when you challenge a jurisdiction, uh, a court, you know, can't ignore that. You can challenge, if, you, if you've got a solid jurisdictional challenge, it's got to kind of stop everything and look. Right. Because, you know, you know uh, and, and so, I, you know, I think they'll do a, you know, I think they'll do a good job. They're, they're sharp people. Uh, and and they'll, they'll do the right thing. You know, the, but you know, I, I just kind of you know keep wondering uh, why that wasn't done before. Because if I can see it, because Greenberg ain't allow it. Well, there you go. And then, how can, do you not allow somebody to do that? You know, and that's part of the was, reasons why Doug chose to take a step Doug back Anton. because him right, yeah. and because him and Greenberg kept clashing, and Doug mm-hmm. said that he didn't want to you know hurt the case, but I made a call. I didn't speak to him yet, but I'm vouching for Doug to come back and walk, rock with Tom and Nicole. Yeah, you know, three people is enough for, you know, good amount for this case. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, it, it's not that Tom is anywhere near, not, not sufficient enough. You know, he's, he's, uh, you know, he's more, you know, he, he could do the job, uh, you know, with file a motion. But I mean, what I don't understand is why, why well, I do understand why, but. You know, it's crazy. Not when I, you have other lawyers who want to file legitimate motions, not to let them to stop them from filing it is absolutely insane. Crazy. I mean, well, when I used to do it, when guys we had you know, one time five lawyers, uh, and you know, guys they would say, "No, Joe, we think I go this issue," and I will great, write it up, file it. The next court day we're going to be there, such a date, set it up for that date. Let's get it going, and then they would do it. And I, you know, because they're professional, I let them. Right. I wasn't trying to micromanage them. They asked me, 
and, and if it was legitimate, you know, thing, yeah, I, I'd give. Well, you know, who am I? Am I? I'm not gonna, you know, I, you know, that say that I'm gonna be one with enough intelligence to decide. They got a good case. They got a good motion. They got a good reason. Hey, man, you know, uh, I mean, who knows? Maybe that's the one that's gonna catch the judge's attention and get the case kicked out. Why should I stop it? <laughs> you know, it makes no sense. Right. So, Joe, let me ask you this: mm-hmm. if you had, if you had to sit back and think about any regrets from working with any of the lawyers on the Drew Peterson case, what would be your number one regret? I mean, clear, clearly, we, uh, you know, bringing, letting, uh, agreeing to let uh, <laughs> Greenberg come on was was the biggest mistake. You know. Uh, because what he was basically doing is sabotaging the case. Why, you know, why, why would he, during the trial? I mean, he was, you know, I mean, he was not show, he was not prepared for witnesses. You know, he would be insisting to, you know, making scenes that he wants to do this witness, but he wasn't prepared to do it just because so he could look, just because he could be there and and look important. It was, I mean, we had to stop him from going on TV because he was going on court TV. I got those like pictures a, a, too. Yeah, and, and and it was crazy, you know. But you don't think that the prosecution can listen in and find out what we got planned for later that day? Facts. <laughs> yeah, you know, it, it was insane. Uh, so, you know, it was that was that was a big problem. But you know, look at and you know what, or, 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 Mr. Kelly seems to be very solidly. You know, he understands. I think how he's kind of been screwed over. Yeah, and I don't think he's very happy. Probably, I mean, I don't know, but. I'm assuming he's not very happy with it, and I think he realizes that he's got he needs to you know uh, kick uh, Greenberg to the side if he's to have any chance at, at getting a a fair trial. And, and well, you know what I'm actually thinking as well. I'm thinking Greenberg milked this as much as he can or could, and now that he's down to the wire and he don't have half of the stuff that he lied to Robert and said he had already. Uh, I think that he went in and said, "Well, Robert, take a plea." And Robert's like, "Man, you don't get the hell out of my face. Yeah, I'm I mean, fighting I, this." I don't know. I don't want me to. Yeah, that's just my opinion. That, that's my that. opinion. I, I got news for you. you know, if I, if he, he got a, if he got a, a, a good enough offer. <laughs> but, but uh, you know. Would you say well, if he had a good enough got, offer? What? If he got good, you know, that, that includes all the cases. You know, you don't want to. You got case in Chicago, case in. Um, but, you know, if there was a general settlement that, you know, was a reasonable thing, I mean, but, you know, look at, uh, you know, that's a What would be a general, what what would be a good offer to you in this type oh, of case? Man. God, that's something that gives him a life. How old is he now? Uh, 54. That's how I think get him, get him out before 60. I mean, he's got, what, two years in. You know? So anything to get him out and be for 60, it'd be a good offer. I mean, I think so. I think so. I mean, you know, but I don't got to do the time. You know, he, he's the one that's got to do the time. So, that's but that mean that his record will will be blemish. But that mean yeah. that you know what I'm saying. That's, but if he's convicted, man, you know it's over. So, but you got to convict the person and be. Uh, but I mean, and you have to convict them, and it have to be without reasonable doubt, right? Right, yeah, but let me tell you, I mean, I've seen people that are, I've seen people convicted when I, you know, that really, you know, shouldn't have been. And, you know, it, it's, juries are very hard to predict. Gen, generally, I, juries, I, you got to look at them as like a bell curve. You know, you know, nine, nine, eight, eight, eight to nine out of ten, eight to nine, well, it was 80% of the time to 90% of the time to get it right. But the, the other, yeah, the other 10 to 20%, you know, they are very. They can be unpredictable, and you know, they just get get it totally wrong. And uh, you know, it's just you know. So sometimes, you know, it's better to make a good deal than go to a trial, and even though you get it, you know. But you know, this decision. That he, I don't know that he's going to get that to make that decision at this point because the plea negotiation in federal court take a long time and a very complex thing and. You got the proffers and all this other stuff. I was just about to ask you that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, there's not enough time. I was just about to ask you that, and because uh, one of the guys who cases got transferred over to Robert's case because he claiming that Robert told him to do this, all the crazy stuff. Um, 
Uh, at his last status hearing, and the federal government said that they are willing to hold and extend that guy's plea. Yeah, because he's, he's going to testify. So, so that means he's going to testify. Right. So that means I mean. So in other words, pe- people was like, "Oh no, Don going to fight this. He ain't going to testify." And I'm saying to myself, if they oh, doing he's that, he's going to testify. He's, he's testifying. testifying. Yeah, hundred percent. That's why they're. That's why they're delaying the sentencing. That's and why they're th- delaying the plea. Right, and because then on testing. top of that, they uh, but but they gave him his trial for January 2022. And I'm well, saying to got, myself, they got, yeah, but they got to set they got to set a date for it's, it's under the speedy trial. Statute. Okay, they got they got to set a date, but you know if they're delaying it like that, he, he's he's testifying. But I'm saying to myself, like. If they merge his charges over to Robert, why is his court date settled far out instead of them putting it all together since they merged his charges over? Because they, they just want to, because they, they want to keep him on the string, so they know he's te- they they got control over him to testify to what they yep. want him to testify to. That's got it. So while he going around look, 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 look. YouTube, got everybody yeah. thinking that he's for Robert the whole time. Like I said, he's preparing to testify. And as can as long as he can keep the people from making a noise, that's what it's about. Yeah, he, he wants to try to do what's best for him. But look, look, the, the bottom line here is that uh, we all we I think that you know, Raymond's been exposed for what he is. Yep. Okay? And, and what his game and every and what his game is has been exposed. Uh, you know, and so you know, and, and I think the, what really uh, nails that home. Is his, you know, attack on people who are just trying to do the do the right thing and, and, and be of assistance, and you know his his this vicious, you know, attack on these people for no reason, uh, you know, just because they won't let him, you know, be play superstar, uh, you know, it, it's just so. I mean, it, it, it's an nail that just shows what he is. So they need to, you know, people who su- who support Mr. Kelly, and that's their. You know, their right to do it. Uh, you know, uh, help. You know, these give Tom and Nicole, you know, uh, your support. Let them know that they got people rooting for them. Because mm-hmm. that make that makes a big difference to them. Believe me, I've been there. So it makes a big difference. You know, people are help are supporting you, and they don't believe all the horse shit. Uh, and you know, and let them get through this week so they can put their heads nose to the grindstone right. and do it as as much as humanly possible between now and the start of the trial so that you know so that mr kelly can get get a fair trial and uh you know that they can bring all the motions that should have already been brought and, you know do all the things that need to be done uh you know and it'll make a big difference you know it really will it'll, it'll make a big difference to that they know it'll energize them it'll help keep them focused it'll get, they won't get discouraged because they've been dragged through the mud it, it really, it'll make a big difference. And that's what I hope that now that we've kind of shown what he is, that now people will kind of, you know, rally behind the, the two lawyers who are there just to do the, do their right. job and do it well. So let me ask you this. In the, in the um, post that you put out, right? Um, Wait, which? Uh, it was one that you put out last week. Um, oh. Jesus Christ, my mind just went blank. Um, but anyway, for the post that you put out, when um, Jesus, I, I I hate when it happened when when your mind yeah, go I, blank. I know it's beside the Alzheimer's. Right, right. <laughs> no, I ain't <laughs> no, Joe, I own now. Okay, I get right. no. <laughs> but um, yeah, I'm, I'm, we'll, we'll remember what it was about. There. Yeah, yeah, it was pretty much about um, it was pretty much about Greenberg. Um, well, yeah, but. okay, what is his trial record? As far as like and Fed and state, <laughs> that's what it was. His, his trial record. Uh, well, you know, you know. Apparently, at some point in time, uh, I heard that he had claimed that uh, Leonard, his partner, uh, has got six not you know six acquittals in federal court, and that he's the best in federal court, and uh, and that uh, Greenberg's the second most second you know best in sec in federal court. Well. Uh, I, I when I heard that I called uh, some friends of mine who really do a lot of federal criminal stuff. Uh, Joe Lopez for one. Yeah. Joe. 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 But I know uh, Joe. Done, 
yeah, Joe did the, uh, you know, the, the family secrets, the biggest mob mm-hmm. trial in Chicago history. The yep. Yankee Caleb Reese. So that Joe's, you know, uh, <laughs> Joe's, not, and uh, I told him that he was sitting with a bunch of U.S. attorneys, you know, just, you know, over coffee when I told him that. And I bet you they're still laughing. They, they all fell over hysterically laughing. <laughs> I mean, they couldn't, they were, they thought it was the most funniest thing they've ever heard. Look at, you know. <laughs> I know for only thing I know that Grimm has ever been uh, lucky enough to get in federal court that I know of. I mean, I, he may have gotten I, since then he may have gotten acquittal. I don't know, but the only thing I ever knew that he got was a hung jury. Mm. Uh, you know, sometimes and that's you know, it. But yeah, but I mean, he could have got other ones I don't know about that that uh, since then it may have happened. I, I don't know, but what I think that they're saying, and this is just speculation. But I think they're saying, what they think they're doing is this. If you get, uh, like with Robert, there's like five or six, with Mr. Kelly, five or six counts, right? Mm-hmm. So you go to trial with six counts. And you get not guilty on three and guilty on three. They're, ta- they're considering that to be a not guilty because they got a three. Their client's going to prison. But there's three three counts they got not guilty on and three counts. But the other three are guilty. So you didn't win. Count- well, I, I, I don't, if your client's going to prison, I don't you consider that to be a win. Yeah, right. I don't consider that a win. Right. But, but you know, I think that's what they're doing. But, you know, they're, they're, that's just hilarious, you know. So, so let me ask you this, Joe. Sidebar for a second. Sidebar. Okay. Um, if a person is collecting money on behalf of a client, right, mm-hmm. and a client didn't authorize it, right, mm-hmm. and they collecting money from different states, couldn't that person get criminally charged federally if they collected over a certain amount and it didn't go to where it was supposed to go? That's a, it's just a serious charge. Uh, mm-hmm. But, yeah, I mean, that, if you're collecting money um, for a client without his acknowledge or permission, that's a serious problem. And then if you're doing that on false pretenses, um, you know, by wire, you know, interstate by wire, that's also a serious that's charge. Why but, that's what I figured. Yeah, but but I don't know that anything like that's been happening. I mean, you know. Yeah, it happened. Well, you know, that's you ain't hear from me, but the platform you was on did it three times, and I'm gonna leave it there. That's not a good thing, but you look at. I'm uh, just gonna pray for the person. That's all. You know, look at it. it, You know, I you know I don't know. Like I said, I just trying to deal with what (laughs) what's in front of me. But look at, you know, I just wanted, like I said, my goal here was uh, to alert. The masses, the, 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 the yeah, Kelly's you know uh, supporters or people who are interested in at least them getting a fair trial, whether they support them or not. That you know what what's what's what games being played here, right? And yeah, and you know to try to you know uh, help the people whose name would got dragged getting nagged through them unnecessarily and unjustly being dragged through the mud, right? You know to give them a little bit of help. You know, so my, the benefit of my of my experience uh, dealing with this with this uh, character, so that they don't fall, they don't make any the same mistakes that I may have made, and then right. uh, you know, and, and that's that's it. And I hope the guy, you know, I hope the guy gets a fair trial. Oh, I, I just call me. Uh, could you hold, hold on one second? Yeah, yeah go, go ahead, Joe. Sure. Go ahead. No, go ahead. just hold on one second. Okay, <laughs> okay. Hey. We're currently on hold. We're here with the great internet guy, the former prosecutor, the former lawyer, Joel. Just giving y'all a heads up of what's going on. Cause I know some people are probably looking at this like, oh my god. Hello? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, look, yeah. Unfortunately, I get a, this is a call I got to take. Okay. Cool. Uh, but but cool. anyway, look. That's all I want to do. I just hope that everybody will, you know, uh, you know, give their support and their, and their love to, to Nick and, and, and Nicole. Okay. And and just you know show them that show them that there's people that believe in them and support them and you know no, don't believe all this garbage mm-hmm. that's being said. Any and I t- think that you know let's, let's hope that you know, he, they can give them a fair trial. Right. And anytime you want to come to the platform, Joe. I mean, hey, you here, and you got my number, you got my email, you got everything. Man, just hit me uh-huh. if you want documents. I'll send them to you. Uh, well, let's see what happens. I'm really interested to see what happens on Thursday. Okay. And, uh, you know, that, that's going to be interesting. I'll probably talk to everybody. I'll, I'll post a few more things over the week, and then on Thursday, let's see what let's see what happens. It okay. Inter- and then we'll come back to the drawing board. Okay, bud. All right. Talk to you. All right. Thank you so Take much, care. Joe.
So, that was a that was a tape conversation with Joel. Um, great guy. Um, he's talking about his experiences with Greenberg. Hold on. He's talking about his experiences with Greenberg. Steve Greenberg, that is. So, with that being said, like I say, this is, that was Joel Brodsky. Um, former attorney. He's uh, Drew Peterson's attorney. And Greenberg screwed him over in that case. So, I thank y'all for joining me. Um, we'll be back and we'll talk about it more. All right? Those were the questions that nobody asked. Like I say, if you want real interviews, real conversations, real talks, you come here. You don't go nowhere else because can't nobody give you what Dana J can give you. Thank y'all for being supportive. Thank y'all for watching Dana J. I am the CEO of the Dream Team. And we meaning the Dream Team and the COO, Brooke, and all of the other people that's branched out from us. We thank you. Enjoy your Sunday. Be blessed.